King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget. Get semani, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Let me like Mary through the. Come with a gift to thee. Show to me now that empty tomb. Lead me to Calvary. Oh, lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget. Thine agony, lest I forget Thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Oh, lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget Thine. Oh, lest I forget Thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. To my knees, God, I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to You, Lord. Lead me, oh, lead me, lead me to the cross where Your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord. I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to you. Oh, lead me. Oh, lead me. Lead me to the cross where Your love poured out. Bring me to my knees. Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to You. Oh, lead me. Oh, lead me to Your heart. Lead me to Your heart. Lead me to your high, your high. Lead me to your high, your high, your high. Uh, good morning, good morning again. Welcome to our Monday morning, men. We just want to give God some thanks. We want to give God some thanks and praise for for just being here with us. Just give me a few seconds here. Oh, wow. 
Okay. Oh, wow. He came from one. I'm just trying to make myself a little more visible. Well, good morning again once on a Monday morning. Um, we are so happy to be here with you this morning. We thank God for his goodness towards us. We thank God for what he's doing in our lives. And we want to let you know that the Lord, he's always good. In the morning, he's good. In the evening, he's good. Amen. And we are so glad this morning that we can be found in his presence at this time in such a form and fashion like this. Once again, we are Monday morning men, prayer time, and it's good to be here. But this morning, I have a very special guest with us, um, a man of God that that is doing some tremendous things for the Lord, a man that has God's people at heart, and we're not going to take too much longer before we introduce him. Um, when I introduce him, he will tell you some things about himself and what God is doing in his life. And then we will take it from there. So without any further ado, I want to present to you um, our Pastor George, our Pastor Peter George. And he's coming from Trinidad and Tobago. And we're going to introduce him to you now and let him tell us something about himself and then we're going to move on from there good morning pastor george how are you good morning reverend okay. james i'm all right i'm all right i'm all right so happy to be here this morning yes so i want you to tell the people about yourselves and um um let them know what what you're doing as far as ministry is concerned and then the floor is yours okay well Lord. From Tobago, actually, I'm living in Trinidad because I'm married to a Trinidadian. Amen. I am from the better half of the island, Tobago. I have been in Trinidad for the past 20 years in ministry with the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. And we are in the process of building a temporary building in meant to house God's people. And so that's as far as where I am in terms of ministry. Uh, my intention is to make sure that where we are, we are housed so that God's people can have a place of worship. Amen. I'm married, uh, one wife, one child, serving one God. Amen. And um, and so this one I want to share with us uh, from Luke chapter 18. And we're reading from verse 1 to 8 as we share this morning on prayer. And the Bible says, And he speak a parable unto them to this end, this is Jesus speaking, that men ought always to pray and not to faint or lose heart, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said on, within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, least by her continual coming she weary me. Verse 6 says, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them? Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Father and God, we thank you again for your goodness. We thank you for your love and for your mercies. Lord, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so, Father, as we 
delve into your word today. Pray, oh God, that our ears and eyes and our spirits will be open to your word. That, oh God, not just education will take place, but, oh God, there will be a shifting in our spirits as we commit this path and this time into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The power of persistent prayer. I'm told that Michael Jordan is maybe probably the greatest basketball player in the history of the game. And at one time he was asked about the so-called secret of his success. And Michael Jordan answered and said, I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost almost 300 games. 26 times I have been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I have failed over and over again in my life. And that is why I am so successful. Mr. Jordan tells us in plain English that the key to his success was persistence. In these verses we have read, the Lord Jesus tells his disciples a parable that is designed to teach them the importance of remaining persistent in prayer. I would like for us to examine this parable together this morning because we need to hear the truths that are taught here. Because in the church and in the work of the Lord, everything rises or falls on prayer. <clears throat> Our relationship with God <coughs> excuse me, cannot develop without prayer, whether individually or as a local body. Prayer has to be the foundational practice for survival. And so as a church, as a believer, you and I cannot successfully serve God Minus prayer. Prayer is vital to our success. And so this morning, as we share on the power of persistent prayer, we want to look at the cry of the woman, cry of the widow, her demand. We do not know the nature of this woman's burden, but she had a grievance against someone that was laying very heavily upon her heart. Look at her disadvantages. This poor soul had several things working against her. When it came to seeking redress before the court of law, she was a woman, and women were not allowed to speak in court at that time. She was a widow, and she had no husband to speak for her. She was a widow, and there was a segment of society that was oppressed and often taken advantage of. She was a widow, and being a widow was synonymous with being poor. She had no money with which to greet the wheels of justice. She could have paid it, she could not have paid a bribe had she wanted to. Look at her determination in verse 5. The Bible refers to her continual coming. This phrase has the idea that she was begging this judge for help every day. When he would show up for court, there she was. When he went into the marketplace, there she was. She pleaded with him in front of his friends. She stalked him at home. Everywhere he went, there she was. My God. Constantly asking him to give her satisfaction. Look at, des look at her desperation. Because of her social standing and because of her financial standing, she had no other hope but to get help from this judge. Therefore, she made a new sense of herself before him every day until she received the very thing she was after. Note this. This widow represents us as believers. There are times when we too are burdened down with cares and worries, with fears and troubles. During those times, it may seem that every circumstance of life is stuck against us. 
there may be temptation to say, what's the use? Especially after we have prayed and prayed and prayed about some matter. Yet, if we can learn anything from this poor woman, let us learn the lesson that persistence in prayer pays off in God's time. Are you hearing me? So keep praying. Despite all the obstacles you face and despite all the obstacles that may come your way, my exhortation to us this morning is to keep on praying. No wonder the Bible says, according to Matthew 7 and verse 7, Ask, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it will be opened unto you. What that means really is this. Ask and keep asking. Seek, and keep on seeking. Knock, and keep on knocking until you receive the answer from God. So we look at the cry of the woman. Let's look at the coldness of the judge. He was corrupt. This man did not care anything about God or man. All he cared about was himself and his own life. To put it simply, he was a wicked man. To understand this judge, we need to understand something of what the judicial system was like in those days. The courtroom was not in a fine building as we have today, but it was in a tent that was moved from place to place as the judge covered his circuit. The judge, not the law, set the agenda. And he sat legally in the tent, surrounded by his assistants. Anybody could watch the proceedings from outside. But only those who were approved and accepted could have their cases tried. I'm going someplace with this. This usually meant bribing one of the assistants so he could call the judge attention to the case. Not only he was corrupt, but watch this. The judge was callous, according to verse 4. Even though he had heard this widow petition and saw she had a case, he simply turned a deaf ear to her pleas for help. He was hard-hearted and close-minded to the needs of others. He was also condescending. In spite of his spiritual condition and in spite of the fact that he did not care for this widow in the least, in the end, he helped her. Why? The answer lies in verse 5. There are two words there that are of special interest. The Bible says that she troubled him. This word comes from two words that means to reach forth, to beat another, or to cause another trouble. So she troubled the man. The other word there is weary. This word means to beat down. I love this word. To blacken the eye. It is a word used to describe the effects of being beaten severely about the head. If evidently, this means that her continual coming before him and her constant crying was hurting this man's reputation. She was giving him a black eye in the community. Note for us, the lesson here is this. We may not get the answer we want immediately, but we must keep asking and keep believing God will answer in his time. If you and I are to get an answer, it may take some action, consistent and persistent action. There's a man by the name of George Muller. The great prayer warrior said it well, when he said, the great fault of the children of God is this. They do not continue in prayer. They do not go on praying. They do not persevere. And I'm saying to us this morning that if you and I are to get anything from Almighty God, we need to be persistent in prayer. Watch this. Look at the contrast now in the next verse. In verse 7, hear what the Bible says. And shall not God, God who is not wicked like the man, God who is not 
callous like the man. God who is not condescending like the judge. The Bible says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them. Jesus now turns from the character in this parable to the Father in heaven. He shows us that God, who is nothing like the unjust church, delights in answering the prayer of his elect. I love this. No wonder 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. <coughs> Excuse me. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Psalm 34 and verse 6 says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and the Lord delivered him or saved him out of all his troubles. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> this God that we are talking about is a God that will honor our persistence. The Bible says, though he bears long with them, sometimes prayer is answered immediately. We know that. And we love that. We love when we pray that God comes through right away. At other times, the answer is delayed for some time. <laughs> the key is not giving up. God isn't just making us wait. He's working out the answers we seek. Are you hearing me? Let me say it again. God is working out the answers we seek. Our persistence in prayer demonstrates the depth of our burden. If you can pray about an item once or twice and then give up, you won't really burden. A genuine burden will put you before God and keep you there until he answers. My own testimony. While as a church we were looking, amen, to purchase a parcel of land, we would have been turned down eight times. Eight times the answer was no. As a matter of fact, we had no money. We were at least 50 persons in the church looking to buy a parcel of land. That will cost over $575,000. And every time we go after a parcel of land, the answer was no. Until the eighth one, God said yes. Can I tell you something? All of the other parcels of land we went after, compare them to where we are now. I am happy that we lost those eight, those seven parcels of land. Because where we are now is the perfect place. The eighth parcel of land, God says yes. And if you're into numbers, it means new beginnings. So I'm saying to you, if we are to receive anything from God, you and I ought not to give up. We ought to be persistent in prayer. Are you hearing me? This God that we are serving, he honors our persistence. Not only that, this God handles our petitions. He doesn't turn a deaf ear to our petitions. But he begins the process of working them out speedily. In truth, real prayer is the evidence of God's impatience pending answer. Why? Because real prayers always begins with God. The spirit burdens our hearts and we offer the burden back to God who is already busily engaged in bringing about the answer. Are you hearing me? Look at Romans 8 and verse 26. Let me read Romans 8 for us. Romans 8. And verse 
26 and verse 27. Look what it says. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Look at verse 27. And he that he, God, that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Are you hearing me? The Spirit burdens our hearts. And we offer the burden back to God, who is already busily engaged in bringing about the answer. What great confidence that should give us in prayer. What a desire that should put within us to seek his face more consistently and persistently in prayer. What a challenge for us this morning as I close. <clears throat> what a challenge to God's people. What are we to do with this message? I think the answer can be summed up by three simple challenges. That will make all the difference in our prayer lives. One, be committed to pray. Let me say again. Be committed to pray. The Bible says men ought always to pray. Always. In every circumstance. Prayer has to be part of your life. Be committed to pray. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, while he walked on earth, when you look at his lifestyle, early in the morning, always spend alone time with his father. He was committed to pray. And you and I, if we are to be persistent, if we are to reach anywhere with God, we must be committed to pray. No wonder 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. So without ceasing has the idea of no intermission. It can refer to a nagging cough or a tickle at the back of the throat that says a cough is always about to happen. Be committed to prayer. Not only be committed to prayer as we look at this message, but be consistent in prayer. Don't faint. Don't lose heart. <clears throat> One of the things I, I found out as you and I begin to develop our prayer life, the enemy of our souls will always throw things at us. Sometimes legitimating, sometimes he causes others to behave like demons just to throw you off your game. Are you hearing me? But do not faint. While we were purchasing land, amen, members of the church left. Because we were asking for too much money. And we felt hurt. Small number. And yet some left because we were asking for too much money. And while we were go doing what God says to do, we saw persons coming into the church from the neighborhood. Don't lose heart in spite of what is in front of you. I hear the Bible saying, without faith, it is impossible to please God. They that come to him must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Don't give up. I don't care what you're going through. And I'm speaking here from my own personal experience. I don't care what is before you. Don't give up. God will see you through. Are you hearing me? And lastly, be comforted by prayer. Look at verse 8 in our text. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. God will come through for you. God will show up. 
God is not like man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he says it, he will do it. God will show up, be comforted. That he's going to come through for you. Nevertheless, the Bible says, when the son of man cometh, shall he find you persistent? Shall he find you holding on to his word? My encouragement to all of us this morning. Don't give up. Keep praying. Push until something happens. Will you bow your hearts with me? Let me pray. Father and God, we thank you. For this time. In your presence. Father, I don't know who is listening, but you know. You know where they are in terms of issues, troubles, fears. We pray for strength at this time. Oh God, inject them with the kind of tenacity that they will not give up that they will persevere. Oh God, that they will declare what the psalmist says, as the deer pants after the water book, so pant their soul after you, oh God. Minister unto them. Cause them, oh God, never to move their eyes off of you. Strengthen your people today, oh God. As I commit them into your hands, let the will of the Lord be done in their lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Good morning again. Uh, thank God, Pastor George, for that wonderful message. Um, the power of persistent prayer. Yes. Amen. And we thank God for that message because that is a great recipe for the children of God that want to get things done. Yes. You know, sometimes we have to go beyond our ingenuity. Yes. We have to go beyond what we think. Yes. And go by what God says. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. That's the power of persistent prayer. Thank you so much for that word of God. You know, I, I don't I don't preach over people's messages. <laughs> <laughs> I just thank God for your word. And I thank God for you so much. And thank God for what you're doing. You know, when when Dr. Roberts and uh, Dr. Um, Thomas spoke concerning you coming on today. Um, she gave me a little synopsis of what you're doing. And yes. I think it's only wise that the people hear what you're doing. Um, she said that you were, I think you were here before. On, yes. on this platform before. Yes. I yes. You your, wife, your wife was here also before um, um, <clears throat> Pastor George. And she was telling me that um, you had purchased a parcel of land with yes. the idea to build an edifice for the Lord. Yes. You know, and um, you know, sometimes when people buy land, they buy to build a nice fancy houses and so on with a white picket fence. <laughs> 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 uh, but but you decide you want the land to build a house for the Lord. Amen. Yes. And that's where you would get God's people to come together. For the Bible said uh how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. So, so um, we have quite a host of people that are following us, uh, Pastor George, mm -hmm. uh, folks from all over. And um, when when consulting with, with, with Dr. Thomas, he said, um, we want to make a request to those that are looking online. We have quite a number of them that, that are, are online with us. And the idea is, she wants everybody to sow a seed in your ministry in Trinidad. As far as I believe you must you have the, the foundation up already. Yes, we and, have. Yes, we do. And you're looking to go up with the walls now. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, we want to make the request to each and every one that's on the line and all your friends that you know. We want you to be able to make a tangible contribution, a tangible sowing of the seed 
into the ministry of Pastor Peter George in Trinidad and Tobago. So what Dr. Thomas was telling me, all of you, um, when Brenda Gillian, I'm on Frederick Camille Romeo, Marcia Allett, Victoria Roberts, Ann Lawrence, Craig James, Margaret Mulligan, Beryl Eiffel. Yeah, I usually do my roll call, you know. <laughs> my spiritual roll call, Pastor. <laughs> You know, so uh, we just a good time. Catherine Williams is here. Jean Thomas is here. Anne Lawrence. Mary Holmes is here. Right? Joan Hart Green. Come in, come in. Oh, good morning, Sharon Take Charles. How are you this morning? I'm in public. Angela Joseph. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Yeah. And so, Pastor George, what we, we're going to do, we're going to make a request to those who are listening on that they could sow a seed in the ministry. And how, the best way to get it then, Pastor Thomas, was to see that um, you could make, they could make the, to the church here in, in, in Queens, help yes. the people heal. And I believe he's coming to Trinidad pretty soon. I think within two weeks, I, I, I was told, yes, within yeah. two weeks. So yes, within yes. two weeks, but, but what yes. happened? Maybe when she decides to come, we might have to send a bodyguard with her because (laughs) (laughs) for those who don't have her particulars, uh, if you want to send by by cash app, um, is a dollar sign, Dr. Pastor Thomas. Dollar sign, D-R-P-A-S-T-O-R-T-H-O-M-A-S. It's the dollar sign, D-R- P A S T O R T H O M A S. Once again, the dollar sign. D R Doctor P A S T O R Thomas T H O M A S. One more time. The dollar sign. D R for Doctor P A T O R Thomas T H O M A S. And those of us know him. Mr. would know how to get in touch with her. We know how to get in touch with them. Is that a dog you have back in the background? I have, I have, I have four dogs. Oh my goodness! It's just music to my ears to hear dogs back in, <laughs> dogs in New York. You know. Yeah, I have a husky and I have two other Dalmatian mixed with King Corso. So I have wow big so dogs. Like- so you're well protected in the back there. <laughs> well, I have one daughter, so you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, Pastor, um, so you um, you said you went eight times before you could get that Pastor Vlad. Yes, sir. Which is good. I mean, you, that is something else. You know, it shows great persistence and it shows the desire you have for, for the things of God, and which is good because, like I said before, people might, they want the house, uh, they want the man to build the house, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's not yes. absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, as a man of God, you're looking to get a place where you can host God. Florence Foster, good morning. I'm talking to Pastor Peter George here, and we're just discussing about the ministry he has in Trinidad and Tobago. So, um, we, we're asking that everybody who is listening right now, whatever it is you can give. To, um, to assist the man of God in Trinidad to continue to erect the temple that he's building. Um, you could make all your contributions to um, the Helping Hurting People Heal uh, with Pastor Thomas. That is the, the dollar sign, D-R-P-A-S-T-O-R. And you will get it. And obviously those of the members, those who have known her, they would have other ways of contributing to when I bring it down to Trinidad when she come again. You know, personal, um, yeah, personal donation, give it to person, which would be good. Amen. 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 For you, I, I don't think I've seen you before, but I feel that I know you all my life. <laughs> <laughs> let me thank. You. Let me thank those who will be contributing. Uh, I really want to thank you for your contribution. Um, it will help. Um, in advancing God's cause here in this part of the vineyard. Um, and may God enrich you for it yes. as you seek to establish God's kingdom here in Trinidad. Amen. 
So which which part of Trinidad are you actually south? In? South, a place called Penal. Penal. Yes. Penal, yeah. It's, it's, yes. it's in the south. Oh, okay. Um is actually so it is the lar largest landmass in Trinidad. So it's it's okay. It's, it's really a big place, yeah. Uh very good. That's very good. Yeah. You know, it's always good when God's people are, are doing God's work. Yeah. You know, and I believe in all honesty and all transparency. I believe yeah. that um, as a man of God, you know, and, and your wife is working along together with you. Yes, you know, yes. You all will be able to do great things. You know, the Bible says one shall put a thousand, yes, but sir. ten thousand. And if you yes. and your wife is two, imagine the problems the enemy have. You know? <laughs> so yes, yes. he said, every time you wake up in the morning, the devil is mad. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm glad. <laughs> Praise God. So uh, we just want to thank God so much for the message. Amen. Power of persistent prayer. Amen. And what we usually do, we usually we have a few more minutes and we want to be able to continue to pray because on Monday morning, men pray. So uh, okay. while we get to work, we want to pray and uh, believe God for, for those who are listening. We pray for God really intervene and intercede on behalf of his people you know there are those who have who are sick in our midst and we want that god would be able to extend extend his healing virtue and touch them those who have financial situation those who have all, all type of problems mental physical and so on so we usually go before god with that so i don't know if you if you're here with us you could take some of those prayer requests before lord just in general actually i am on my way to work oh, okay okay all right <laughs> Go ahead, then. but i will pray but i will pray for those who are not well before i go yes. okay pray, pray for healing yeah yes go ahead let us pray yeah father we thank you again lord that there's no distance in prayer yes so we lift up those who are sick at this time yes oh god stretch down your hand and touch them Lord, all kinds of sickness and diseases yes. you have healed before. And you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so, Father, we bring those sick before you right now. And we declare healing to their bodies. Oh, God, touch every muscle, every tissue, yes. every joint. Oh, God, touch red blood corpuscles. Touch the white one. We declare, God, you're going to bring those bodies back to normalcy in the name of Jesus. We come against aches and pains, yeah. oh God. And so, Father, we, we lift them up before you. And we declare total healing, oh God. Those with diabetes, oh God. Yeah. Pain in the back, pain in the leg. Those, God, yeah. who, who are in severe pain that cannot sleep. We pray, God, for healing to their bodies right now. We commit them into your hands and we declare, Lord, that your name will be glorified through them, even at this time. So, Father, let your will be done. Yes. Let your healing virtue sweep over their bodies right now. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, praise amen God. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. So, good. so, Pastor George, I'm putting in my request now. When that building is finished, I want to be there. Of I want course. to be there to uh, of de course. dedicate it to the Lord. Or even even before that. Come down, come down, come down, come down. Yeah, maybe. You are we, so welcome. Yes, yeah, we could come down and have a big open yes. air service on the, on the premises right there. You know? Yes, 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 yes. So pray the Lord bless you. I know you're on your way to work, so God yes. bless you. Thank you so much for the and message. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I do appreciate this. All right, so God bless you. Bye bye, yes. Well, praise the Lord again. Once again, we thank God for the man of God who so ably gave the word unto us. And I see, good morning, Pastor Jennifer Simmons. How are you doing this morning? And as we continue in our prayer, because we want to spend a few time to pray and see God. You know, um, there are those who have lost loved ones in our midst, there are those who are sick and shedding and and the pastor prayed for those. But there are other needs. There are financial needs. There are domestic needs. There, there are health needs that we need to, to deal with. And other areas, areas in the countries that we live in, that, um, that God would just comfort and do a great work. 
Amen. Because God is moving. God is doing great things. And we just have to be in, in the mix to realize what he's doing. So we just want to give a mass prayer before we close off. And we want to thank God so much for each and every one of you again that's on the line. Good morning to you, Pat Shares. How are you this morning? Praise the name of the Lord. And we really thank God for his goodness. So we have a great sense of the presence of God. Leonard Scott, good morning to you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Marcia Hart, good morning. Glory to God. Uh, Leonard Scott, uh, good morning to you. Praise the Lord. And as we continue to pray, Lord, I just bring your people before you one more time. Oh, God, we thank you for them being on the line, Lord. We don't take them for granted. We thank you, God, that you stretch forth your hands and meet every need in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, those who have needs, oh, God, domestic needs, oh, God, social needs, oh, God, that you will meet them in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, there might be those who are looking for husbands, those who are looking for wives in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will meet those needs in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray against the quarreling and the confusion in the homes in the name of Jesus, the spirit of division that is trying to raise havoc in the home. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against those spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, oh, those spirits of witchcraft, those spirits of negromancy, oh, those wicked spirits, I bind them in the name of Jesus Christ. Those spirits have been sent to bring division and discord in the lives of your people. I come against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I pray against those forces, hallelujah, that we cannot see with our natural eyes. But oh God, they're looking around, Lord God. But you, who is all powerful, oh God, you're able to remove. So even though we walk through the valley of the shadows of death, we will not fear evil because why? You are with us, oh God. Lord God, so we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every name, oh, uh, that, that every knee will bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory and honor of God. Hallelujah. Lord, those who have lost loved ones ah, by way of death, oh God, and you, God, could be a great source of comfort for them at this time. Lord God. You would be a source whereby you would maneuver yourself to work on their behalf in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the platforms in such a form and fashion like this. All those who have platforms and, and God is raising up in this time and in this season. Hallelujah. We think of our Pastor Rosalind Doyle in the name of Jesus who comes on in that three o'clock morning. Oh God, we pray, oh God, for this ministry, the helping hurting people heal under the the leading and guidance of Dr. Thomas in the name of Jesus, Dr. Marva Thomas in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for this ministry here, oh God. I also pray for Elder Glenn Thomas, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will continue to propel this ministry. Look upon the families in the name of Jesus. Lord God, look upon Pastor Adrian Heights, Lord Pastor Jennifer Simmons, oh God, and her as a rise ministry. Lord God, touch them in a special way. Cover them with your blood. God, we think of Pastor Jeremiah Prescott, uh, Evangelist Jeremiah Prescott. Lord God, I pray for that in a special way. Nicole Balo Singh, Lord God, uh, Pastor Hale, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I bring them before you. Lord, understanding that they are there at the forefront. They are the ones that are spearheading the ministries. And we realize that the enemy will try to attack them viciously and ferociously. Why? Because he wants to stop the worker. But if God will be for you, who can be against you? And Lord, we know that the angels of the Lord will encamp round about them in the name of Jesus Christ. So protect your people, oh God, and all those who work along in these ministries. Lord, I pray that you will cover them with, the, with your blood in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for your man of God that so ably brought the word unto us this morning in the person of Pastor Peter. Oh, God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will touch, oh God, him. Touch Pastor George in a special way as he endeavors to build up a new temple for you, Lord. I pray that you will touch your people, oh God, to do exceedingly abundantly, oh God, to sow a seed in the ministry that, oh God, the work will go forward in a great and powerful way. Oh, my, my God, my God, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for each and every one on the line this morning that you continue to minister unto them. Hallelujah. Lord, and when you minister unto them, they, they'll be well ministered unto. Hallelujah. 
Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, because we know, even as the man of God said, that you are working out the answers that we seek. So every time we pray and we don't see the answers, it's not that you're not hearing us, but you are working the answers that we seek. You're meandering and you're finding ways to bring the answers to fruition, whereby we receive the blessings. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your goodness towards us in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, even as we come to a close of this wonderful time that we had in your presence, oh God, we pray that you continue to meet every need, solve every problem, dispel every doubt in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for this time, Monday morning, men, whereby we could come to you in such a form and fashion. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So once again, thank each and every one of you for coming on. And we pray that even as the man of God that was here. Good morning, Beryl Eiffel. Good morning, T-O-E. To. Good morning to you. My, my, my. Um, and as you heard, the man of God that was here and... We want to be a blessing to him. We want to be able to add and sow a seed into the ministry. So we want you to govern yourselves accordingly. Um, Pastor Thomas will, will, be, oh, will receive the funds. And then when she goes, she make a personal delivery to him. Praise the Lord. And we have come to the end. You know, Pastor Thomas, obviously, time flies, uh, especially when... Uh, you know, you, you're in the presence of the Lord. I must say good morning to Craig James Sr. How are you doing this morning? Good to have you. And all others that is on, uh, good morning and have a blessed day. Brenda Edwards, good morning to you. Praise the name of the Lord and we just time to move. And so let us pray. And now the grace of God and the love of God and the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, remain, and abide with you now, henceforth and forever, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So God bless you once again and have a great day. God bless you.